We're on the lower Nolichucky River here in northeast Tennessee. The Nolichucky is one of the region's most popular recreational waterways, seeing thousands of rafters, tubers, kayakers, canoeists, stand-up paddle boarders, and fishermen every year. This is a section of river where one of our students attending a whitewater kayak instructor class last Memorial Day weekend became entangled in a trot line. A trot line is a thick fishing line stretched across the river with hooks spaced evenly along its length. Fortunately, due to his quick actions and training, he was able to free himself, but not before he saw one of these large gauge hooks get dragged across the front of his life jacket. Had this been one of the many children or family members floating on tubes that day, most without the benefit of a life jacket for protection, it would not have ended so well. They would have caught the hook in the chest, face, eye, arm, somewhere, but that would have been just the beginning. After dealing with the initial shock and trauma of being hooked, the current would have taken them downriver to the end of the line where they would have been pulled underwater and died a horrific death. Trot lines are effective at what they do. They hook fish, but unfortunately they can just as easily hook people and they don't let go. We're here today to simulate what happens when someone is hooked by one of these lines and to demonstrate the hazard trot lines pose to the public on widely used recreational waterways like the Nolichucky River. Here we have standard material used to make trot lines. The lines themselves vary in diameter, but two millimeters is a fairly standard diameter. They're often referred to as size 36 for the main line. In this case, size 21, again, about two millimeters. You see tensile strength ranges from about 235 pounds to 340 pounds. So this is what we're looking at for the main line. Here's a kit from Walmart four trout lines, and this again shows one 235 pounds, so it would also be similar to the number 21 or two millimeter diameter line. <clears throat> Dropping off the main line, you have your drop line, which tends to be a smaller diameter, in this case size 18, in this case tensile strength of 160 pounds. So this line stretched typically bank to bank, or in some cases, maybe partially across a waterway, you at a minimum would have 160 pound breaking strength and upwards of 340, 350 pounds. In terms of the hooks, they're attached to the line. These are often spaced about four feet um, from hook to hook. And these tend to be large gauge fish hooks, much larger than a standard fish hook. And you can see it there for size in uh, comparison next to the quarter but these are standard sizes here and you can see how large these hooks are here's the trot line in its configured form we have the drop line coming off the main line for the drop line we use number 18 bank line and these would be distributed roughly every four feet along the main line across the river We've anchored off the trot line to either side on boulders. There's one on that side as well into the river itself that we've anchored off to so we stay off the private property. And that line runs across the river just underneath the surface to where it's anchored here. You can see where we have it anchored and where it goes out into the current. Along that line would be large gauge hooks, spaced roughly every four to six feet across the length, typically, of the river. And this line here has a tensile strength of somewhere around 340 pounds. This is the gauge of the fish hook. These are marketed as trot line hooks. You can see that's a sizable hook, steel. For the simulation, we're using a Rescue Randy mannequin. These mannequins are used by first responders, search and rescue teams, fire departments for their training. Here we have a Swiftwater Rescue specific mannequin that has holes along the length of its body. These holes are designed to take on water. So when he's empty, he's roughly 55 pounds, but when full, He's in excess of 100 pounds, which would simulate the weight of a large adolescent or teen or a small adult. 
Around the top of his torso, we have attached a throw rope. This doesn't offer any assistance during the simulation. It's simply to aid us in retrieval of the mannequin after the simulation. We've attached the hook into the bottom of one of the mannequin's feet in one of the holes, given that this is where most tubers or swimmers would likely be hooked by a trout line. And here's the hooked victim in the final configuration. In the simulation, we have our tuber floating downriver enjoying the day. When he is suddenly hooked by a trot line just under the surface, he feels one of those large gauge hooks impale his lower extremities. He suffers the initial shock and trauma, at which point he panics. It's just a matter of time before he comes off the tube. At this point, the current will take him downriver to the length of the trot line. And at that point, his head will be slowly pulled underwater and unless he can stand up, which he likely will not be able to do, either the current will be too deep, or if his lower extremities are hooked, he won't be able to get his feet underneath him. He'll try to go to the push-up position, get his hands underneath him, push his face to the surface. But unless it's any less than arm's length deep, he's not going to be able to do it. Now it's just a matter of time. He'll likely have one to two minutes before he goes unconscious and drowns. Another perspective, Randy, out there, we want to show that we do have the line off the side to tend him just in case he were to release, we can pull him back in. But that line is not doing any of the work in keeping him out there. You can see how loose it is. What's keeping him in place is a trot line that you cannot see that goes directly upriver. He is hooked on that trot line, which has just pulled him underwater. And he's been under there a few, several minutes at this point. Too late. What are the options that have been presented by TWRA? To their credit, they're trying to come up with options. One of the options that they came up with is possibly disallowing bank-to-bank -bank trout line, but allowing bank-to-mid-river trout line. This is the problem with that. In this case, the line is not anchored on river right, but it is weighted down by a rock if it would have been mid-river. So had that person still been caught on that trot line, say on the side of the river where that trot line was set up, they're still going to end up getting pendulum down river, in this case still in current, the current that's at least way steep or higher. That line is still wrapped around the mannequin's foot, so he's not going to be able to get his feet underneath him. Sort of heads down foot entrapment or heads down entrapment in this case. There he is. At least this far of the surface under the water. You can see that person's dead on it. So in the time it took us to fill this, that person's dead. So we've gone back to back trot line. It's a no-win situation, especially on a widely used recreational waterway that sees a ton of kids, recreational users, tubers, rafting, customers, etc. Locals who swim. They get their leg pulled on a trot line like this, whether it's the hook or actually wrapped around that line. One of the things about that line that's not often talked about, it almost seems like it has bad intentions. It wants to wrap around stuff like an evil serpent. We've dealt with this all day today doing this simulation where we've had to be super careful about not having those lines wrap around our limbs in the concurrent. It's a really quick way to kill yourself. Again, here we have right under the surface there. Going on a few minutes now. In this case, again, bank to mid-river trot line that was weighted with a rock about this big in the middle. So it did release some. Again, what's been presented by TWRA, TWRA officials is that once they got hooked and got pendulum towards the bank, they would drag that line along with them, and then eventually that line would, would break free. And you can see that's not the case. Okay, you know, typical trot line material here in tensile strength of about 350 pounds. Pendulum to the side. The current this strong. It doesn't look bad, but it's it's insidious. It's got um, it's much worse than it than it, than it appears.
part of the problem with the logic that a bank to mid-river trot line would pendulum the victim ashore and therefore they'd be able to basically help themselves get out of trouble. The first one is the assumption that number one, they would still be breathing at this point because there's no guarantee of that. Remember, they're also dealing with significant trauma at the same time, okay? But the other problem with this logic is once they get swung towards the bank, the helical flow of the eddy line, in other words, the difference between the flat water and the river water is such it wants to rebound people, objects, back into the main current. And that's what it's done to him here. Now, I'm in waist deep water, and you may think that, well, I can just stand up, or he can just stand up. So if he were still breathing, we can just stand up, and he'll be, yeah, he'll be uh, impaled, or he'll be breathing. Well, again, no guarantee he's still, still breathing. But even so, if he is, at this point, if his leg is hooked, and that's what's likely going to be hooked by somebody, by a trot line, if the water's deeper than this, you're in big trouble. Because as he gets pulled out, pushed over by this really strong current, it's tough for me to keep my footing right now. As he gets pushed over this way, he can't get his feet underneath him. The water has to be this deep before he cannot breathe. Or it could again be a seven-year-old girl before she can't breathe. It's going to be even shorter. Because as she gets pushed forward, she's going to want to go to the push-up position and keep her head above water. Guess what? I still haven't even hit the bottom. He couldn't either. A child certainly couldn't. You can see how tough it is for me to even move around this current, let alone if you're a hook. The victim is now at the end of the line. He's got pendulum tours ashore. But again, you might expect he'd get pulled into the eddy at this point, but he's actually stopped right there in mid-current. What it takes is for me or someone to go and grab him and actually pull him into the eddy. So the question then is, is that going to happen? Most family members don't know. Uh, they don't have the training, and they're going to see something like this happen. They're going to panic. It's really only going to end one way. That could be avoided. If we disallow bank to bank trot lines, we disallow bank to mid river trot lines, and at a minimum, follow the regulations or adopt the regulations in North Carolina that requires trot lines to be set parallel to the nearest bank, which would be here to my left. That would essentially take it out of play from the main waterway and keep these kids, these families safe as they're floating down this section. We're going to see a lot more people on the river this year, just like last year. We continue to allow these trout lines to be set across waterways like this to wide recreational use. It's just a matter of time. Two years ago, Brandon Arts in Middle Tennessee, the suspected died on a trout line. The eyewitnesses attributed it to him getting trapped on a trout line on a river like this. Found his body later. Last year, we almost had a student die, and, and he was trained. And yet, he could have easily been the second fatality. It's time to do something about this before we have another fatality.